In this video, I'm going to do a walkthrough of a results section associated with an independent samples t-test. Now this video assumes some basic understanding of a t-test, and so I'm not going to show you how to do a t-test. I'm going to show you how to write up the results once you've completed a t-test. Now this results section, I think, if you were a student and submitted this to a teacher or a tutor for marking, it would completely blow their mind because it's uh, very detailed and it's highly structured. And I think if you were to submit it to a journal for peer review, it would be equally impressive. Uh, so to get started, the first section of a, in my opinion, of a good results section uh, is descriptive statistics. And in this case, this example is based on a comparison between non-smokers and smokers in terms of differences in brain volume, frontal brain volume. And there is a How To Stats video on this analysis uh, that you should check out in the Independent Samples T-Test case. So in the first sentence, the non-smoker group uh, was associated with a brain, a frontal brain volume mean of 5.33 and a standard deviation of 1.06. That's the first sentence. It's a descriptive statistic sentence. Now APA format is being used in this results section and so the mean is symbolized by an M, the letter M italicized, and standard deviation is symbolized with SD, which is an acronym for standard deviation. Now you can also report standard deviation just with an S, but most people write SD it seems, and I do myself. So those are the, that's the mean and standard deviation for the non-smoker group. Now by comparison, the smoker group with a sample size of 19 was associated with a numerically smaller frontal brain volume with a mean of 4.29 and a standard deviation of 0.95. Now what's important is that I've written the word numerically smaller. This is just setting up the stage for what analysis is going to be performed. The question is, is it statistically smaller? Is it smaller in a statistically significantly way? in a statistically significant way. And so the number, the word numerically has a very different connotation to statistically. So I don't know if it's by chance or not. So the next sentence, to test the hypothesis that non-smokers and smokers were associated with statistically significantly different mean frontal brain volumes, an independent samples t-test was performed. This type of sentence is only rarely reported in results sections and it's to the detriment of the clarity of that results section. You should always specify to somebody what analysis you're going to perform and what hypothesis that analysis is, is actually going to be uh, testing. So just to repeat that sentence, to test the hypothesis that the non-smokers and smokers were associated with statistically significant different mean brain volumes, an independent samples t-test was performed. Now the next sentence, as can be seen in table one, the non-smoker and smoker distributions were sufficiently normal for the purposes of conducting a t-test. Virtually every statistical analysis has assumptions. Now that I've specified the analysis I'm going to perform, I have to satisfy, I have to justify that analysis based on assumptions being satisfied. And the rule that I use for normal distributions is that skew needs to be less than an absolute value of 2 and kurtosis has to be less than an absolute value of 9. And I'm going to make another video on the robustness of various statistics and what rules you should follow. You certainly should not be testing these distributions for statistical significance using something like a kolgomorov smirnov uh, or a Shapiro-Wilkes type test. Those tests are completely inappropriate for evaluating the assumption of normality for something like a t-test or ANOVA. So this rule of skew of 2 and kurtosis of 9 is based on research conducted by uh, Schmieder and colleagues 2010. And I have the reference to this in, the, in this results write-up and you should check it out. And in fact at some point I'm going to write, I'm going to do a video on why this rule makes sense and why I use this rule. And I use other rules as well. Uh, so the next, st next assumption associated with the t-test is homogeneity of variance. So I've satisfied normally distributed data, and I'll get to this table in a second. Uh, the table is on a page further